You have been lied to about your body. You have been told that your joints are supposed to hurt as you get older, that rest is best if your back is sore, and that cracking your knuckles is turning you into the Crypt Keeper. Today, we're gonna hit 10 of the most ridiculous orthopedic myths I hear as a surgeon. And by the way, in part two of this series, we're gonna get even spicier. We will go after gym bro myths, TikTok rehab hacks, and some straight up nonsense I have seen in my own comment section. For returning viewers, do me a solid and give the video a like and let me know in the comments what's the craziest orthopedic myth that you have heard. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Watch the video first and if you learn anything, join our army of intelligent interns learning about healthcare at the end. Let's get to a million subscribers together and have everyone arrive there a smarter person. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dr. Chris Rayner, orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine doc, and the guy on the internet who keeps telling you that your knees are not destroyed just because you turn 30. If you see my videos on knee pain, sciatica, or the ones where I react to people ruining their spine with deadlifts, you already know the theme. Most people are not suffering from their injuries. They are suffering from bad information about their injuries. This is not gonna be Trust me, bro. I'm going to tell you what the evidence says, and I'm going to tell you like I would tell a patient sitting in my clinic. That said, let's get into some myth busting. Joint pain is just normal aging. Nothing can be done. Guy in his early 40s comes into the clinic. Desk job. Bit of a dad bod. Knees hurt while walking upstairs. Back is stiff in the morning. He tells me, Doc, I'm just getting old. There's nothing to do, right? My dad's knees were bad too. This myth is everywhere. Sounds reasonable. Stuff wears out, right? Your joints absolutely do change with age. But the difference between I can still play with my kids and I need a handrail for everything is often body weight, activity level, muscle strength, sleep, and recovery. Not just the number on your birthday cake. If you can move it, it's not broken. You've heard of this, right? Bro, if you can walk on it, it's fine. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. I see this a lot in guys who play rec sports or work construction. They twist an ankle, limp for a week, never get it checked, and then show up later with a fracture that has been healing crooked for three weeks. You can have non-displaced fractures, cracks that are stable but real, and still move the limb, sometimes even bare weight. Function alone cannot rule out a fracture. That is why we have clinical decision rules, like the Ottawa ankle rules, that look at where it hurts, not just can you move it. So the rule of thumb is simple. If you've had a big trauma, you have focal bone tenderness, or you cannot put weight through it normally, get it checked. Do not walk it off for two weeks and then act surprised when I tell you the bone healed in the wrong place. Cracking your knuckles gives you arthritis. This one just refuses to die. If it were true, half the planet would be in line for joint replacements by the age of 50. The best data we have, including studies that actually took x-rays of people who crack their knuckles and people who do not, show no increased rate of degenerative arthritis in chronic knuckle crackers compared with non-crackers. But what's actually happening? Well, gas bubbles collapsing in synovial fluid, ligaments and tendons snapping over bony prominences on the bones. Now, could you irritate soft tissues or reduce grip strength if you aggressively wrench on your fingers a thousand times a day? Sure, but that is not the same thing as bone on bone arthritis from cracking. Annoying? Maybe. Socially unacceptable in meetings? Definitely. Causing your grandma's arthritis? No. Bed rest is the best treatment for back and joint pain. This one is actually dangerous. We used to do this. You hurt your back? Stay in bed for a week. Then we studied it. Trials in acute low back pain show that prolonged bed rest leads to slower recovery and worse function compared with advice to stay as active as you can within limits. Modern guidelines discourage extended bed rest, encourage gentle movement, walking, and physical therapy early. A day or two of relative rest, Fine. A week of Netflix and not moving? Now you have stiffness, deconditioning, and sometimes more pain. If you saw my earlier video on back pain myths, this is exactly what we talked about. Your spine is not a fragile glass rod. It is a dynamic, load-bearing structure. It wants smart movement, not jail time. If it hurts, you should avoid all exercise. This is like the cousin of the bed rest myth. I hear this from lifters all the time. My shoulder hurts, so I stopped training upper body completely for six months. And now the shoulder is still sore, the whole upper body is weaker, and they are scared to move it. Research across tendinopathy, arthritis, 
arthritis and chronic back pain is super consistent. Graded exercise and load management outperform just resting and doing nothing. Mild controlled discomfort during rehab is usually safe and sometimes necessary for tissues to adapt. We talk about this a lot in my rehab content and the Apex framework. You do not stop moving, you change how you move. Sports permanently ruin your joints. This one hits a lot of guys who used to be athletes. Uh, they look at their sore knees at 35 and say, shouldn't have played football, bro. Sports destroyed my body. The data is a little bit more nuanced. Population studies say regular recreational activity and moderate sports participation are associated with better bone density, muscle strength, and function later in life. Higher risk of osteoarthritis shows up mostly in collision sports Sports, people with major joint injuries like ACL tears that were never rehabbed properly, or people who massively overloaded one area for years. The problem is not sport itself. The problem is bad technique, zero cross training, ignoring injuries, and trying to be 22 forever on a 42 year old training plan. Orthopedic surgery always means huge cuts and brutal recovery. This is the origin story of a lot of fear. People imagine giant incisions, months in a hospital bed, screaming in pain, then never being the same again. But outcomes research on arthroscopy and minimally invasive techniques shows. Smaller incisions, less soft tissue damage, shorter hospital stays, and faster return of function for many procedures like knee scopes, some hip and shoulder surgeries as well, compared with old school open approaches. On top of that, regional anesthesia, nerve blocks, and multimodal pain protocols have all come a long way. Pain is still real, but it is not the automatic horror show your uncle described from his surgery in 1978. In other words, Orthopedic surgery is not a Marvel movie origin story where you disappear for six months and come back part robot, except maybe with people like Travis Pastrana. Joint replacements only last a few years, so wait as long as possible. This one keeps a lot of people limping into clinic 10 years later than they needed to. Long-term registry data on modern hip and knee replacements show many implants are still going strong at 15 to 20 years. Survival rates are especially good in older and moderate demand patients. So if you are 65, can barely walk, and somebody tells you, do not get a knee replacement, it will only last five years. They are quoting you data from an older generation of implants. Now, if you are 35 and want to play tackle football with a knee replacement, yeah, we need to think long and hard about that. But for a lot of people, delaying forever just means 10 extra years of pain, less activity, more muscle loss, and more weight gain. And by the time they finally get the surgery, their rehab is harder because they are so deconditioned. After joint replacement, you can't be active. Follow-up studies show high rates of return to walking, cycling, swimming, hiking, golf, and similar low to moderate impact activities. After hip replacement and knee replacement with good implant survival. We usually say avoid repeated jumping, heavy pivoting, and collision sports, but please do walk, ride, lift appropriately, and go live your life. You will not turn your prosthetic knee into dust by going for a brisk walk. In fact, that movement is what keeps your heart, muscles, and other joints healthy, which matters just as much as the metal inside of you. Imaging looks bad, so I must be doomed and need surgery. This is one of my least favorite myths. Guy comes in, MRI report says disc bulge, degeneration, partial tear. He has already Googled everything. He is sure his spine is ruined forever. But imaging studies in completely asymptomatic adults, people who feel totally fine, show high rates of disc bulges, meniscus tears, rotator cuff tears that cause zero pain and never need surgery. Do not treat the picture, treat the person. That means symptoms, function, and examination come first. Imaging is just a tool. So when a radiology report scares you, the question is not, does my MRI look like a horror movie? But rather the question is, what do I feel? What can I do? 
and what does the exam show? We did a whole video on this with spine imaging and back pain. Same principle, a scary picture does not always mean you need a scalpel. I am the first person to say this. And where does this leave us? Let me summarize the vibe so far. Pain is not automatically destiny. Movement is not automatically dangerous. Surgery is not always necessary. And imaging is not always controlling your future. So if all of this is wrong, <laughs> To what's right because once you accept that the old stories are wrong you have to decide what to replace them with do you keep waiting for the perfect injection or surgery bounce from cairo to physio to youtube guru or take ownership of the boring unsexy but incredibly powerful basics so now we're going to talk about the part that everyone underestimates. How to optimize bone health and joint health with simple stuff you can do daily. And yes, this is the part where half the internet clicks away because walk more and lift some weights does not sound as cool as a new supplement. But this is the part that actually changes outcomes in the research. Exercise is not the villain, it's the main character. Big trials and meta-analyses on osteoarthritis and chronic back pain show structured exercise programs reduce pain, improve function, and in many cases, delay or reduce the need for surgery. We are talking two to three sessions per week, strength training for legs and hips, low impact cardio, and mobility work. Not the CrossFit Games, not Navy SEAL training, just consistent progressive loading. Bone responds to load, not wishes. Bone tissue is actually alive. It remodels based on the forces you put through it. So studies on bone health and fracture prevention show that weight bearing exercise and resistance training improve or maintain bone density. Combined with adequate calcium and vitamin D, they lower fracture risk in older adults compared with doing nothing. If your entire weekly movement is walking from desk to your car and car to couch, your bones are getting the signal that we do not need to be strong. Meds and injections are side quests, not the main storyline. Pain meds help manage symptoms, but they do not change strength, mobility, or bone density. Steroid injections can give short-term relief and they are useful in selected cases, but overuse can harm tissues and they do not fix mechanics or habits. So let's turn this from theory into something you can actually do. Think of this as your bone and joint cheat code you unlock at the end of the video. To avoid injury, respect pain, don't worship it. New pain that is sharp, localized, increasing, or linked to a clear injury, get assessed. Mild training soreness that settles within 24 to 48 hours, that is usually just adaptation. Progress your training like you level up on a game. Do not go from no squats to max squats in a week. Increase volume or intensity slowly over weeks, not days. Warm up like you mean it. Five to 10 minutes of movement before you load heavy Heavy is appropriate. Save max ranges and heavy stretching for afterwards. After injury or surgery, stick to the rehab plan. Trials show that outcomes are better in people who actually do their home exercises and follow the progression. Shocking, I know. Avoid the two extremes, doing nothing because you're scared and doing everything because you feel pretty good today. Your tissues do not care how motivated you are. They care about load over time. Use meds as tools, not as a lifestyle. Short-term pain control is fine and may even be necessary. Long-term, the goal is to rely more on movement, strength, sleep, and strategy than on pills. Don't wait until you're broken to care. Strong bones and joints at 60, start with what you did at 30 and 40 not with the magical pill at age 59. In part two, we're gonna go after gym bro myths like squats destroy your knees. What are you doing, bro? Dude, I've gotta hit my anabolic window. And some wild TikTok rehab hacks I have seen that make me want to surgically remove my eyeballs. Thanks for joining me in this myth-busting speed run. Comment part two if you wanna see that in the future. Be sure to join my intern army and click your notifications to catch my uploads every Monday. And don't forget to follow my gym, Human 2.0 Fitness, for free right here on YouTube, where we post content that helps you move better and prevent injury, or its sister channel, Human at Home, where we show you how to be healthy in the space where you live. Keep moving, question your myths, and remember, strong bones are built, not gifted. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one. Mm-hmm.